Hello, this is Roman Gabriel, and you are listening to The Grilling Truth. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Grueling Truth NFL Legends Show. I'm your host, Mike Goodpaster, and today we've got a special guest, one of the greatest cornerbacks in NFL history, played for Detroit Lions, now um, was elected in, I believe it was 1992, to the Professional Football Hall of Fame. Help me welcome to The Grueling Truth, Lim Barney. Thank you very much. It's great to be on your show. Oh, great to have you on. Um... So just tell us a little bit about growing up in Mississippi when you first started playing football, you know, just the basics of when you were younger. Absolutely. Grew up in Gulfport, Mississippi, great parents, the late great Burdell and Lem Barney. And I played football in high school at 33rd Avenue High School. And uh, my mom did not want me to play because she thought the sport was too rough. And she was afraid I would get hurt. But my coach assured her that it wouldn't happen. So with a lot of... uh, persecution and uh, pressure, she agreed on one condition, that I had to play in the band at halftime. And can you imagine <laughs> me playing in the band at halftime? In my uniform. <laughs> and then what put it back on play? during the game. Uh, what a transition. But I what, did. What instrument? And, lo- and, and loved every minute. I was a drummer. I played drums in high school. All right. Uh, so you ended up, your high school career went well. You ended up at Jackson State. What led you to Jackson State? Well, uh, Willie Richardson, who played with the Baltimore Colts, was a All-American at Jackson State, and I, I watched him uh, playing against Grambling, and uh, what a great play he was. And as a result, I ended up being drafted by uh, Grambling, Alcorn, and Jackson State. But Jackson State was closest to Gulfport, Mississippi, so I chose Jackson State. And I played defensive back and punt return as well as a punter while I was at Jackson State and was scouted by the late, great Dick Knight Train Lane, who was also an NFL Hall of Famer, and he became a mentor as well as a father figure to me. Yeah, and I mean, when you were at Jackson State, you want to tell us a little bit about your time there? I know you played for head coach Rod Page, who actually I think ended up going on to be the U.S. Secretary of Education. Certainly did. He certainly did. I did play for Coach uh, Rod Page, and Coach Bob Hill, who was the offensive coordinator, and the late, great uh, Henry Ford, who was the uh, defensive coordinator. But it was great playing at Jackson State, and uh, some great players have come out of Jackson State to get into the league. Yeah, like I said, we had Robert Brazil on earlier, probably about a year ago. Great guy. Should definitely be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been a ton of players that come out of Jackson State. I mean, Walter Payton, maybe the greatest running back of all time. Um, so when did you first, you know, think that, you know, maybe I got the skills to be an NFL football player? Well, I got scouted by the late, great Dick Knight Train Lane. After he retired from the Lions, he became a scout for them. And he came down my sophomore, junior, and senior year and told me that I had an opportunity to be drafted early in the draft uh, uh, my, my senior year in high school, in, in college, and I did. I was second-round draft choice in uh, 1967, number two behind number one, Mel Farr, and uh, what a joy that was. Yeah, Mel Farr was a great player also. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience on draft day in 1967 as opposed to what you see nowadays. Well, <laughs> Cause I know it's a big thing. difference. <laughs> Biggest thing is the salary difference that I could see. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, the anticipation to get into the league is another big uh, heart, heart, heart throbber. Uh, guys who've, who've played in high school and played in college really want to play in NFL. It's always a joy, and it's always a tough situation. But uh, it, it, it's a great plan now, the way the draft is. And there are a lot of great players that have now made it into the NFL. All right, so your first NFL camp, I mean, was there anybody there that kind of helped you out, or were you kind of on your own? Well, during my days with the Detroit Lions, I played with some great legends. Uh, The Hall of Famer, uh, Charlie Sanders, as you know, who's gone on to glory, and Mel Farr, who's gone on to glory. They were both like brothers to me, but the great coach and Hall of Famer as well, Dick LeBeau. Uh, I played with Mike Lucci, uh, Jim Thrower. Uh, Levi Johnson, Paul Newmoff, and Alty Taylor, Bill Munson, and the late great Alex Karras. But Dick LeBeau was a great, uh, great assistant while I was playing, uh, who, who became a great coach for the uh, Tennessee Titans. 
Well, yeah, and when you got there, you were coached by a guy, I think it's in the NFL Hall of Fame, too, Joe Schmidt, who was a linebacker with the Lions in the 50s. Absolutely. He played. He had about two championships in 53 and 57, and uh, Coach Schmidt and Jimmy David, who was my defensive coordinator, who played on those 50 and 57 championship teams with Coach Schmidt, was a great, uh, a great father figure for me. All right, so let's go to your first NFL game. I mean, you get a pick six off of Bart Starr. You want to take us through that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, uh, Bart was a icon for me because in high school I played quarterback and went to Jackson State as a quarterback. But Bart was an icon for, I guess, the, the, the whole country. They played every Thanksgiving Day game. And uh, I had a, a big eye on Bart my first NFL game after college was against the Green Bay Packers after they played in the first two championship seasons. Uh, second play was a toss to all-pro boy Dowler, and I intercepted it and ran it in for a touchdown. I said, wow, this is going to be easy. But what <laughs> was, was a great, great uh, quarterback, as you know. He's a Hall of Famer. And I've, I've spoken to Bart over the last few years trying to see how things are going for him. All right. Now, another thing that was interesting to me, I remember watching this movie when I was a little kid. I mean, 1968, I believe it was. You had Paper Lion. You had a little bit of a role in that movie. But do you want to talk about what it was like when George Plimpton was in camp? I mean, is the movie fairly accurate? <laughs> movie is very accurate. Yeah, George came in and uh, did a, a, a game up at U of M and uh, played about a, a quarter and a half at quarterback. And, uh <laughs> It, it was fun seeing him there, and Alan Alda played him in the movie, and uh, it, it was fun. Alex, Alex Karras got a great start there on his movie career. Uh, yeah. After, uh, <laughs> he was there, so it was well, fun. It really was. I mean, you mentioned some of the guys that you played with. Charlie Sanders, one of the great tight ends, Alex Karras, Dick LeBeau, Mel Farr, Coach Joe Schmidt. I think people forget exactly how good the 1970 Detroit Lions were. He had a high-powered offense. Had a, I think you guys were ranked number two defensively. You ended up losing somehow five to nothing to Dallas in the playoffs. Do you want to talk a little bit about that season and that team? Yeah, you're gonna make me cry talking about that five to nothing playoff. <laughs> the I the video playoff tape I, of the game. I've seen it. Y'all should have won that game. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the only playoff I had was uh, the five to nothing loss to Dallas. But uh, we we had a, a great defensive squad again. You mentioned Alex Karras. Wayne Walker, Mike Lucci, Dick LeBeau, and uh, it, it, it just didn't happen for us. Bill Munson and Greg Landry were the quarterbacks, and I think it's, uh, it still is the lowest-scoring playoff game in the history of the NFL football, um, yeah. 5 to nothing, and uh, that's as close as we got. But uh, it was fun getting there. All right, so uh, another thing that struck me that I didn't know about you was your relationship with Marvin Gaye. You want to tell us how that came to fruition? Yeah, Marvin started uh, coming down to a lot of the Lions games uh, on Sunday here along with uh, Smokey Robinson, and uh, we would go to a restaurant after the game at Tiger Stadium to Larco's, and Marvin would come by, and uh, he started – manipulating around with the guys, and Coach uh, embraced him. And so after a while, Marvin got to the point where he wanted to work out with us. So Mel and I would let Marvin work out with us during the off season. And after that, he went on the uh, Johnny Carson, and Shirley Edom did a column, and Marvin said he wanted to try out with the Detroit Lions. And Coach Schmidt asked, him, uh, asked me what was this about Marvin saying he's going to try out with the Lions. So Marvin, uh, Coach told me to bring Marvin down to his office so he could talk to him. So as a result, Marvin and I went down to the office, and Coach asked him to see some film and everything from when he played. And he said, Coach, I never played. So Joe didn't get upset or anything, but he said, all right, well, we're going to have a, a tryout up in um, U of M in, in Michigan uh, coming up in a few weeks, and I'll, I'll get back with you through Lamb. So he went up and tried Marvin out at wide receiver, running back, and fullback. And he liked what he saw, but Marvin just didn't have what he needed for Coach to allow him to come out and put on pads and be hit. So Marvin appreciated Coach at least giving him that tryout. So did Marvin have some skills? 
Yeah, he did, but um, again, he never really played football at all in high school at all, and he only worked out with Mel and I during the off season. And, yeah, uh, so he basically and, never really had any coaching, and probably the technique was probably the thing that he lacked. Right, right, but he, he worked out. We helped him with that, but he just didn't have what it took for coach to give him a chance to come out and put on real pads. But, uh, you know, as a result, I still had the chance to sing background with him and got a gold record on what's going on. Yeah, I mean, what was that experience like? I mean, he's one of the greatest singers in, I mean, the history of mankind, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, it was. And, I mean, again, it came from the point by just during the off season, Marvin would come out and work out with us, and then he would take us out to the studio where he would perform and everything. And then the day he was getting ready to record, what's going on, Mel and I were there with him, and he said, all right, Mel, you take this part, let me take this part. And as a result, come out, we end up getting a gold record. What a joy that was. Well, there you go. There's not too many guys that get a gold record and a pro football and have a gold jacket, basically. <laughs> You're right. There's two golds I got. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anybody else that's done that. So um, we get towards the end of your career. How was it from you transitioning from football to, I guess, everyday normal life? Well, it, it was good. I, I thank God that I was able to get out of the game uh, without having any real uh, bad uh, bad injuries or anything. You know, you got your bumps and bruises. If you play in the NFL, you're going to have some bumps and bruises. But I came out pretty good. I thank God for it daily, and I still have a workout program. But it was a joy playing the game. It was something I always wanted to experience. And so I got that chance to experience it, and it was a joy. Yeah, I mean, what was the experience the day you found out that you're going to be a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Well, that was a that was a, a, a jump up and kick my legs up and down, and I wanted to wallow. <laughs> but I mean, I, I never looked at it at that uh, that I would ever have a chance because I never played on a championship team. It was always second best in the high school. It was second best to uh, Picayune, and in college it was second best to. Gramlin State University, and then in the league it was second best to the Packers or the Vikings. And so, but uh, again, uh, I was looking at championship people being invited and then shrined by things such as Hall of Fame and All Americans and things. But I got the chance to become a Hall of Famer, and uh, it was a joy. It still is a joy. All right, so we talked a little bit about the you know, the bumps and bruises that come with being an NFL player. What what are your thoughts on the NFL's treatment of retired players today? Do you think it's getting any better? I think I think they are getting much better with a lot of guys who have been injured uh, and because they're looking at how, how how the game has grown. Guys are bigger, stronger, faster, quicker, in some cases more intelligent today. Uh, but, again, I, I think uh, the league is going to be around. Uh, there's going to be competition all around, and so the game will still be here. All right, so what's your opinion of the NFL today? Do you still watch? Oh, yeah, I still watch the game. I still watch the game. Uh, we, we still go down to games as well. We went down, and I wanted to crown the way back last week for my long. Oh, Titans game. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, uh, again, I thought they played a good first half, and the second half it, was, uh, it wasn't a blowout or anything. They just didn't uh, – connect on some of the passes. Yeah, they've actually looked pretty good the first two weeks. Matthew Stafford did look pretty good in the first couple games. Uh, but again... So, I mean, what uh, When you watch football today, what cornerbacks do you enjoy watching that you think, this guy could play when I played? Well, you know, I, the, the the cornerbacks today, I, I definitely don't really lock in on them. I just watch the style and the techniques. I think the, the biggest thing about playing corner particularly is about who teach you the fundamentals and mechanics of the game. And I, I see a lot of guys are uh, coached well today, so they they, yeah. they, 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 have the, they have the talents. Well, and I think people, I mean, it was, the rules were a lot different when you played cornerback as opposed to they are now. I mean, how do you think that's been better for the game, or do you think it's been worse for the game? I think it's been better for the game. I think it's been better for the game. Uh, guys are bigger, stronger. And, uh, you know, the point is the referees are doing a great job as well. I, I, I think the officials are doing a great game and calling the game. 
Yeah. So what occupies your time nowadays? Well, I've been in the ministry now for a little over 21 years and uh, still enjoy working out and uh, still love reading and uh, trying to uh, enjoy my family and do some traveling. All right, so what took you to the ministry? Well, uh, growing up in uh, the late, great Burdell and Lem Barney's household on Sunday morning wasn't an option. If you stayed there on Saturday night, Dad said you were going to church on Sunday morning. So it was something that was always uh, in me. And once getting up to Detroit, ended up uh, joining the ministry here and uh, was ordained as well and uh, did some uh, training down in Canton, Ohio, Malone Theological School while I was doing the FCA, heads of the FCA here in the Detroit area. So it's, it's, it's been a joy for me, and uh, it will always will be. All right, well, Lim, I won't keep you any longer today. I know that you probably got other stuff to do, too, but it was really it was an honor to have you on the show. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show, and uh, God bless you and your family. All right, thanks a lot, Lim. Thank you now. All right. All right, guys, that was Lim Barney, former Detroit Lion, NFL Hall of Famer. Um, I want to, let's see, remind you guys to check out our NFL Pick'em show from last night with former Denver Bronco Mark Cooper. Uh, also, if you're a Canadian Football League fan, we have a CFL weekly show with Dieter Brock, um, CFL Hall of Fame quarterback. Um, always have a good time on that show. That show, we've also got Oz Davis and Brian Schmidt on with us. Um, make sure you check out Out of Left Field if you're a baseball fan with Graham McCown and Chris Fury. That's usually up every weekend. You can check out that show. Um, Inside Boxing Weekly with Jeremiah Pricer and myself. Make sure you listen to that. And, of course, this week, starting tomorrow, you'll be able to catch most of our NFL weekly shows, which we've got a Pittsburgh Steeler weekly show with Dwight Stone and Brian Schmidt, um, a Los Angeles Rams weekly show with Tony Hunter and Oz Davis, um, a weekly San Francisco 49ers show with Matt Andrew Scavage and former, four, former 49er great Dexter Carter, and then, of course, the Cincinnati Bengals weekly show with myself and former Cincinnati Bengals linebacker Joe Kelly. Um, also, check out our main sponsor for these shows, which is Gridiron Mo at www.gridironmo.com. So, for Lim Barney, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak. <laughs>